Um, and, you know, one of the really exciting parts of this movement has been the way climate scientists have stepped out of their own comfort zone and, um, and, and, and used their incredible brains <laughs> to try to warn us and to increasingly convey a sense of real urgency with their actions. Um, you know, I was arrested at the pro protests against the Keystone XL pipeline uh, next to Jason Box, who's a fantastic um, specialist in, in, in Antarctic glaciers, and James Hansen was arrested, and there was a scientist block at the climate march, um, which was really amazing. Um, and, uh, yeah, join them. Do you agree or disagree with James Hansen's advice about nuclear power being an essential component to averting climate catastrophe? Um, now, I love James Hansen, um, and I hate to disagree with James Hansen. Um, we all owe him such a tremendous debt of gratitude. He is the real, you know, the godfather of this movement in so many ways. Um, but yeah, I disagree with him on nuclear. Um, and, you know, I understand why um, people looking at the current power configurations as they are believe that we need these centralized solutions, um, these, the, uh, that are less threatening to our elites. I mean, I think the reason why nuclear is is, is is seen as a more practical option is not because we can't get to 100% renewable energy. We can. I mean, there's amazing research out of Stanford by Mark Jacobson that says we can get to 100% renewable energy with the existing technologies by 2030. Okay. The problem is that um, the the problem is that renewable energy is 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 quite challenging to existing power structures because it's inherently decentralized. The thing about um, both fossil fuels and nuclear, any extractive industry, is that um, it is it, 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 it is intimately tied to our unequal economic system because you have resources that are buried beneath the earth that take a lot of money to get out, a lot of money to refine, a lot of money to transport, and then in the case of nuclear, a lot of money to deal with the waste. Okay, So that is a system that's going to lend itself to monopoly power, to a few small players, to a corporatist structure between corporations and government. So for people who are defending that very profitable status quo, it's a lot easier to switch from fossil fuels to nuclear than it is to switch to renewable energy, which is a system that is that is trading in free stuff, free wind, free sun, free waves. That's everywhere. Um, so, you know, it's not that money can't be made, but you're not going to make the kind of stupid money that you make from fossil fuels off renewable energy. And that's why it's so threatening. Um, and, you know, if you have a feed-in tariff and people are able to put solar panels on their roofs and feed into the grid, those people are energy producers. They're not just energy consumers. Each and every one of them is a competitor for a traditional utility. So obviously they're going to fight that model. Now, I understand why somebody who is you know, a NASA, spent their life working for NASA, as opposed to me, who spent my life working in social movements, believes that we're screwed enough that we have to go for these centralized solutions that are less threatening to the status quo. I'm throwing my lot in with social movements. Um, and I understand why, I even understand why a lot of scientists believe that geoengineering is the only way. If, if we look at where we're at right now, um, and we believe we can't change the political configurations, then it makes sense why you would be looking at nuclear and, and, and geoengineering. But precisely because these are so high risk, um, that's all the more reason why it's up to the rest of us to build the kind of broad-based social movements that can change those structures of power. So I guess what I'm saying is I, I, un I understand, but from my perspective, the problem is not just fossil fuels. The problem is an extractive mindset um, that creates sacrifice zones. I think that at the heart of this, this is not just about fossil fuels. This is about the logic that made us believe we could build our economies on a toxic system that has always been based on sacrificial places and sacrificial people. Coal was never clean. Um, and nuclear demands the same of us. Once again, I am not talking about 
um, next generation nuclear in the same way that I'm not talking about, you know, real capitalism. You know, I know that there are people who are saying that next generation nuclear will just run off waste and will have no risk. I don't know about that kind of nuclear. I know about the nuclear that we have, um, and and I know I know quite a bit about the risks associated with it. And we have to get away from energy models that ask other people to eat the risk. Um, and, and it is possible to power our lives without sacrifice zones, um, whether that's dealing with the waste, it's dealing with the extraction or the combustion. Um, and I don't think we switch from one high-risk model to another. So... <laughs>